But let's uh, let's turn our attention at least for uh, a few minutes back to the state of Mississippi and the basketball game that happened on Saturday in Starkville. Mississippi State, a winner over Ole Miss. Uh, it was a close game for a long time. And then Ole Miss went on an extended drought. Mississippi State made some shots, and the Bulldogs pulled away late in the ball game, and they got the victory. Hey, Dad, you were there. Let's um, I, look. I, this probably doesn't really matter, but tell me about the environment. It, I thought it looked and sounded pretty good on television. <clears throat> yeah, uh, not as big a crowd as the Alabama game, um, I, and I think, and I'm not trying to poke fun or anything, but. There were more Alabama fans there when they played, and there were Ole Miss fans there. So, you know, I think that that obviously a few hundred seats for sure. Uh, but I thought it was an overall very good crowd. And then when State made their run in the second half to get the lead back and, and, and sort of take control of the game, it, it was loud in there, you know. And that's back-to-back home games for State where you had, you know, a big enough crowd that it felt like it used to feel sometimes at the Humphrey Coliseum. So, I think they're on the right path there. They have two on the road this week and then two at home next week. And if they continue to play, you know, the way they've played, maybe they can get a split this week. You should have some, some good crowds next week. And for next Saturday, the 21st, is a 7.30 p.m. tip. So, I mean, chance to, to have a really good crowd for that one. Yeah. So that's not this coming Saturday, but a week from this right, coming Saturday. two Saturdays from now. Yes, correct. 64-54 was the, uh, was the final. Uh, Ole Miss was better than they were against Alabama shooting the three when they went two for 24 and were 8% from behind the arc. I guess compared to that metric, they were a lot better. But still only 23.5%, four of 17 shooting the three. And there were a lot. And, uh, And a lot is not an exaggeration. There were a lot of open looks from three that Ole Miss just missed. And a lot of them missed badly. Ole Miss shoots 36% from the field, 23.5% from three. Mississippi State shoots 39% from the field, and they hit a third of their threes. They went five of 15. It's not like they just lit the world on fire, but a better percentage. Mississippi State could have cost themselves once again at the free throw line. They were fortunate not to have that come back and bite them. There is part of the DNA of this Mississippi State team right now that is not a good free throw shooting team. 13 of 26, 50%. That's gross. It just get yeah, me better. I mean, State, I think, is around the 350 mark nationally. Uh, there are 363 teams in Division One. if you want to know where that, that puts them. They're shooting, I think, 62% from the line for the season. Uh, and that number has crashed in SEC play, where they're what? You know, they were 50% against Alabama, 50% in this game and I think 43% against Tennessee, 7 of 17. So they've been really bad in conference play. Chris Jans, I mean, he's scratching his head like the rest of us. That doesn't know how to fix that, but got to fix it. Got to find a way to do it. Ole Miss, what a a weird second half they had. You know, they they were terrible shooting in the first half. I think they were 7 of, uh, I don't know, 7 of like 30 or something like that. They came out hot in the second half. They hit six of their first eight shots. They grabbed a seven-point lead. And then, you know, State doesn't call timeout. They're trying to get to the media timeout or whatever. And Ole Miss just dries up, and State gets hot. And they go on a 16-3 to run, and next thing you know, they've gone from down seven to up five in, like, five minutes of, of, of game time. Ole Miss, like I said, started out six of eight in the first half, or in the second half, and finished their six of their next 20. And they just they totally lost their shooting touch. That, did they lose it or did they find it again? Oh uh, yeah, they found it for a second. I guess would be a good way to put it. No, I mean you they know, found I, their, I you guys their actual DNA there. Yeah, I sent y'all this text during the game, and you know I listen to you guys talk about Ole Miss basketball, and I'm listening to you, and I haven't really watched them this year, but seeing them up close, that is that is a really, really bad, like strikingly bad offensive basketball team. It, it, it almost feels like. You watch them play and you think a really a, a good elite like Bronny James kind of high school team might be able to beat them. Ole Miss had two players in double figures. Matthew Morell had 19 points. He was one of seven from behind the arc. Jamin Brakefield actually continues to play well. 
10 points on okay. four of six shooting in 35 minutes. And he had seven rebounds in the game as well. This is a good game for Jamin Brakefield. Mississippi State had only two players in double figures. Tolu Smith had 12 points in 15 minutes. Played only 15 minutes in the game. Five of seven yeah, shooting with five trouble. rebounds. Had, had the foul trouble issues. But that really opened up the opportunity for Will McNair, who played 25 minutes and had 13 points and seven rebounds. Had a block. Had only one foul that he picked up in the game. Will McNair may have been the difference for Mississippi State on Saturday. Yeah, he was State's MVP because you think with Tolu out, you're really in trouble. I mean, I think if Tolu could have stayed out of foul trouble, he might have combined him and McNair's numbers and had 20-plus points and double-digit rebounds. But for McNair to come in and, you know, it played had moments this year, but to come in and actually play well and be the best player, that's something the Mississippi State has desperately needed is a guy off the bench that they that can get them some points, um, especially if they're going to struggle to 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 uh, to score like that. I'm just going to tell the truth for a second. Those two bad basketball teams. Yeah. I said it at the game, and you said it today on our production call. If either team had been any good, they'd have won by 25. Yes. Simple as that. Simple as that. Yes. Um, I, I, I think there are a couple of things that stand out right now for Ole Miss. Absolutely terrible from from distance. I mean, just so, – so what? Over the last two games, 2 of 24, 4 of 17. So that's what? 6 of 30 – 6 of 41 from behind the arc. Oh, in the last gracious. two games for Ole Miss. Six of 41. That's like you have to try to be that bad shooting the ball. So let, let, let's recognize that that is not a strength for Ole Miss. And if that is not a strength, what do you do? Well, you better figure out a way to try to get to the rim. Try and figure out another way to score. What was the opportunity to do that on Saturday? I don't know how closely you watched the game. Hey, Dad, you were there. Borky, I know you watched it on television. As you listen right now, I don't know how closely you watched the game. Mississippi State spent a fair amount of time in a zone. There was a soft spot in that zone. And, and when I say soft, I'm talking about like, a mattress that you sit down on and you just sink into and you have to, like, pull yourself out of. And it was the free throw line, right? It was that area at the free throw. Now, it didn't stay soft necessarily for an entire possession, but there was an opportunity on a lot of trips down the floor where if you could get the ball to that soft spot in the zone in the high post, from there you can create, right? Defense has to collapse because that's a wide open shot. That you, you turn around, you square up, you got a 15 footer from the free throw line. From that high post spot, you ought to be able to get guys slashing. You ought to be able to get guys cutting to the basket. You ought to get a lot of movement in what you're trying to do offensively. You should be able to kick it out to some open looks. I'm not convinced you're making the open looks, but you should be able to get high quality shots when there is that recognizably a soft spot in the middle of the zone. I vividly remember Ole Miss going to that soft spot once, and it was about five seconds too late on the shot clock, and it was a lazy little lob pass over a defender that got batted away and turned into a transition bucket the other way. I can't begin to tell you how far I am from really understanding how to diagram X's and O's. But if a novice basketball watcher, look, I'm, you guys know I kind of know basketball, but not like at a level of coaching it or really analyzing it. But if Jay Wright spots it and talks about it and Bill Raftery spots it and talks about it and, uh, Brad Nessler can recognize they're not doing the exact same thing. Easily, 
Why is that not something that, that, that Ole Miss sees and adjusts to? It it just doesn't make any sense. And I look, I mean, if Kermit Davis is listening right now, he might say, Richard, you idiot, you have no idea what you're talking about. And maybe he's right. Maybe I don't. I just know what I saw, and what I saw wasn't working. And it looks like that's something that would work. Ole Miss got serious problems. What about Mississippi State? How good are they? Mississippi State 12 and 3. Their net is in the mid 40s. They are 1 and 2 in conference play. And we have a little bit of a disagreement amongst ourselves about what it's going to take for Mississippi State to be an NCAA tournament team. Just looking at their schedule coming up, they've got Georgia on the road on Wednesday night. It's a game State's got to win. It's not an easy win. One, you go on the road. Georgia has already beaten Auburn at home. They were close against Florida on the road. First-year head coach Mike White, familiar name, yes, in the SEC and here in the state of Mississippi. And then State goes to Auburn. And, hey, Dad, you, you said a second ago, you've got to find a way to split the games this week. Yeah. Hard to win on the road. It is. I mean, it, it just is. is. But, I mean, you look at Georgia's net. I mean, I know they did beat Auburn, but they're down in the hundreds. You know, you, yeah. that's a game you sh- you, you got to find a way to win that game. You know, Auburn would be a big plus to win if you could somehow somehow do that. But Georgia's at one nineteen. You, you got to win. You got to find a way to win that game. Um, as what state is is they're they're not. <sighs> let's go back to football, right? They're a good bad team. They're not. They're not a good team at all. Because they have a huge flaw, and it just happens to be everything offense. It's not. It's not three point shooting. It's not free. It's they can't shoot. Period. They're good enough defensively to make up for it some nights. Um, but with the way the schedule lays out, it, it depends on who they beat and who they lose to. If they lose to one of the RPI bombs in the conference, if they lose a game to South Carolina, Georgia, Texas A&M, it's going to be tough. But if they can win those games. If they can beat TCU in the SEC Big 12 Championship, I think TCU's net is 30, right, the second that game is in Starkville. 17th rate team in the country. Yeah. Then you have an opportunity. Or if you can find a way, you can lose that game. But can you find a way that, you know, you've got games remaining with Tennessee, Alabama, Arkansas, Kentucky, LSU, Auburn, to win one of those games and give yourself a good boost in the net. You're going to be there on Selection Sunday. You're going to be, be on the bubble, last four in, first four out, whatever you want to call it. They have that opportunity. Mississippi State closes out the regular season with Texas A&M at home, South Carolina at home, and Vanderbilt on the road. That's a chance to finish strong. 3-0 and chan- going into the SEC tournament. A chance to finish strong. And can they kind of weather the storm? That Borky, you watched it. What did you see? You look at this Mississippi State team. I I, I have the same fears you guys do. I, I I mean, but the thing is, sixty-eight teams got to get into that tournament, right? I mean, see, you got to get sixty-eight yeah. of them. And the net, as opposed to the RPI, really loves the SEC, and in part because the SEC has gotten better. It's not just that it decided that it likes the league now. The league has improved rather dramatically, but. Man, like the Tennessee game, for example. I don't think State played bad defense against Tennessee. Not bad. They could have been better, I'm sure. But in basketball, you're going to run into teams that just make shots. I watched Kevin Durant play the other night. I mean, Herb Jones played elite defense on Kevin Durant. Guess what he still did? He scored. Because sometimes scorers just score regardless of how good defensively you are. I'm afraid the state's going to run into a lot of those games where their opponent's just shooting well or, or scoring the basketball well, and they, they can't win that way. And that'll be the thing that keeps them out of reaching a pretty lofty year one goal, for being honest. If they don't make the tournament, it's not like the year one's a failure for right. Chris Jans. NIT would be a great first year for yeah. Chris Jans. But, but that would be the thing that would keep them away. So in 15 remaining SEC games, do you see a path to Mississippi State going eight and seven in their last fifteen SEC games? Because that would get them to nine and nine in the conference. 
And the metrics like them. It will be a grind and a process and every other word you want to use to describe it. But is there a path? Yes. Yes. But it will be it will be incredibly difficult to do. So, yeah. And I'll be honest with you, whether or not they win, if they go eight and seven, it's going to be mm-hmm. because they win the majority of their home games. And so, if you're yeah. a Mississippi State basketball fan. And this is not a plea for you to go to games. You go to games, don't go to games, whatever. We're, we're kind of past that, oh, you got to go fill it up. I'm just saying this because I've been there. You've been there. You've seen it. Humphrey Coliseum, when it is mostly full, is a hard place to play. It is loud. It's loud. And that is a difficult place for opponents to play when that building is right. It just is. And so you kind of get to make a decision if you're a Mississippi State basketball fan. Are you going to kind of help be a part of this first-year program, figure out a way to scratch and claw and get most of their home games and give them a chance? Or are you just going to kind of sit back and watch and see if it happens? Go or don't go. I'm not telling you. I'm just telling you if the hump is rocking, State's got a lot better chance to win a bunch of home games. 